so I went to the doctor and I, t and, you know, I took some uh, urine and blood analysis and they, they started talking to me about alcoholism. Now I don't drink, but they were convinced I was an alcoholic because my liver enzymes were elevated. Then we got around to a discussion about caffeine. It turned out that I was drinking anywhere from three to four grams of caffeine a day. You can kill yourself drinking too much caffeine, but I prided myself on long work hours back then and it was really bad. So what's caffeine doing? Caffeine is causing the liberation of adrenaline from your adrenals, these two little marble-sized glands above your kidneys. That tends to activate the so-called sympathetic nervous system, make you a little bit more prone to move, um, bring some alertness to your body. And then you simultaneously, it's causing the release of norepinephrine and epinephrine from this little cluster of neurons called locus ceruleus that we talked about before. So the brain is being hosed with a little bit of epinephrine as we speak right now. In addition, it's triggering a, a dopamine increase, but not by triggering the release of dopamine directly. Caffeine increases the sensitivity of dopamine receptors. So whatever dopamine is floating around in your system and my system, the caffeine is amplifying that effect, not necessarily in, by making it a longer effect by making the intensity a little bit higher. The other thing that um, caffeine does, and this is perhaps the most important one, is that it effectively prevents the action of a molecule called adenosine. Adenosine is a molecule that builds up the longer that you are awake. And then when you sleep, adenosine gets pushed back down to a minimal level. Adenosine essentially is a readout of fatigue overall. So if we were to stay up for two days, adenosine levels would be very high. So in terms of a practical tool, I do try and restrict my caffeine intake or at least most of it to the early part of the day. I'll stop drinking caffeine sometimes, usually around 3 or 4 p.m. I don't drink any high amount of caffeine after 4 p.m. and generally not coffee. But when you wake up in the morning, depending on how well and how long you slept, your levels of adenosine might be zeroed out and you feel really alert, or you might have a, a small amount of adenosine hanging around. If you drink caffeine right away, what happens is caffeine essentially binds to the receptor that that adenosine would normally it's occupy. It's an antagonist. It, it's, it's a functionally, it's an antagonist, but it's what we call a competitive agonist because it binds, it binds, so it's an agonist, but it it outcompetes the adenosine so the adenosine can't dock at those receptors. So that's great because you start to wake up, but then around two or 3 p.m., as that caffeine wears off, the adenosine that's still around binds to those receptors and you get the afternoon crash. So one way that you can avoid the, the afternoon crash, or at least... Uh, offset uh, quite a bit of it is to wait 90 to 120 minutes after you wake up to ingest any caffeine. It is important to hydrate early in the day too. Uh, caffeine is very dehydrating. It causes a, the, for various reasons that relate to the, its effects on the kidneys, you start to excrete sodium and potassium and the electrolytes. And those, uh, the action potential, the firing of neurons that we were talking about earlier is mediated by the entry of sodium into the nerve cells and to some extent, the the exit of potassium, it's a, it's a coordinated dance there. You need electrolytes for your nerve cells to fire. So when you're dehydrated, you can't think as well. You can't function as well at the neuromuscular junction. So the first thing I do when I wake up is drink water. I mean, you should hydrate first thing in the morning. Obviously, you should use the bathroom too if you need to do that. But then push out that caffeine intake a little bit. And it, yeah, it's, it's a little uncomfortable at first. And some people don't experience an afternoon crash or people that are going back for more caffeine in the afternoon, they often find that they can drop or have the amount of caffeine that they're drinking in the afternoon, which then has a nice cascade on the sleep system and the ability to fall asleep. Often I hear when, when coffee comes up, people talk about adrenal fatigue and pineal calcification. I'm not oh, sure. Are, okay. are, are, these, are these legitimate sort of phenomenons or, or have you looked into those? Yeah, so adrenal burnout is a myth. Um, I'm not saying that burnout is a myth, by the way. Uh, adrenal burnout is not a real thing. The adrenals don't burn out. Your adrenals are immensely powerful. They were designed to take you through famine and horrible experiences and challenges that could go on three lifetimes. There is something called adrenal insufficiency syndrome which is a legitimate syndrome where the adrenals don't produce enough adrenaline or enough cortisol because the adrenals have a multi layers and cortisol is released from one compartment and um, cells in one compartment and ad adrenaline from the other. It, you can create a system of, you know, wired and tired in your brain and body that comes from excessive caffeine intake. Um, you know, I think it makes sense to not overindulge in caffeine. Uh, and, you know, over the years I've, <laughs> I'll tell you a story very briefly in graduate school, I, um, I became jaundiced. I was, I, so I went to the doctor and I, and, you know, I took some uh, urine and blood analysis and they, they started talking to me about alcoholism. Now I don't drink. I, I used to have a drink or two now and again, but they were convinced I was an alcoholic because my liver enzymes were elevated. Then we got around to a discussion about caffeine 
It turned out that I was drinking anywhere from three to four grams of caffeine a day. A typical cup of coffee is maybe you know, 200, 500 milligrams. You can kill yourself drinking too much caffeine. And I wasn't on my way to death, but I was drinking far too much caffeine. But I prided myself on long work hours back then, and it was really bad, I think. Um, and it was hard to taper that back. Now I drink uh, usually a cup or two of coffee early in the day. Yerba mate is my preferred source of caffeine. Some days I don't drink any coffee. So you can really overdo it. I don't think you're going to burn out your adrenals. I think you're going to burn. I think you're going to be stressed too often. You're just burning up energy. And we hear about fuel energy in the body, something you know far more about than I do, the utilization of fuel energy. But neurons and our nervous system have a sort of what I would call neural energy, the ability to focus, the ability to stay engaged. That's based on the dopamine and the noradrenaline system. And if you are chronically in a state of go, 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 and I should mention that dopamine and adrenaline, when they are enriched in our body and they're released in our brain, we tend to focus on that exteroception, things outside the boundaries of our skin. It's all about what we don't have going on now or that we don't already possess that we need and want. So they're motivating it, us. They are motivating us, but that being in pursuit is fatiguing over time. Whereas there are other neuromodulators and neurotransmitters like serotonin, oxytocin, um, things related to the um, anatomide system that are more about feeling content with what we already have or what's in the confines of our skin. The beautiful place we happen to live in, the people that we happen to have, social connection, they tend to be very soothing. And you know, for better or for worse, a, a lot of our success in life professionally and our ability to obtain those relationships and those things come from being in pursuit. But you have to think of this as a seesaw that you need to be able to go back, run back and forth on. You, you, know, you can't just be in full pursuit of things all the time. You have to learn how to turn that off. And so I guess the point is that with excessive intake of caffeine or stimulants of any kind, nicotine, caffeine, you're going to run into a problem where you'll feel lousy without it. You'll start to feel a little bit more depressed. And, and um, for people who have a underlying issues with OCD or who have underlying anxiety, um, for people that tend to ruminate, for people that tend to have insomnia, you know, it makes sense. You're just ingesting far too much, many stimulants. Yeah, it's not going to be for everyone, at least not at a certain dose. Right. You, gotta, you have to find the sweet spot. And I always say that when you, when you haven't slept well is when you should drink less caffeine. You know, when you've slept really well, you can get away with drinking more caffeine because you're more regulated. The autonomic nervous system is also like a seesaw. You have this, what we call sympathetic or alertness system, and then you have a parasympathetic nervous system. And they're controlled by different neurons and, and molecules in the body. But don't, th don't think about the seesaw as you. What's happening is you have the seesaw inside of you and you're kind of running back and forth. Okay, it's like, you know, oh, get to the appointment and have the meeting, do the podcast. Okay, we're really lasered in. And then do you have the ability afterwards to adjust that seesaw back? When you're sleep deprived, the hinge on that seesaw becomes very loose. So it's sort of like, boom, you're just locked in. I got to go, 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 go. And then you're exhausted. Boom. And so when you haven't slept well, you can probably get away with drinking a little bit of caffeine, but your whole system is dysregulated. When you've slept really well, you can probably drink more caffeine and feel more in control of your mind and body. So a it's a little counter counterintuitive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly.